In E versus the English province of Our Lady of Charity, a priest was said to have abused a young girl. Was he an employee or independent contractor? It was held that although there was no contract of employment, the relationship was akin of to employment. The courts have taken a wider view and included relationships which are akin to employment relationships when deciding whether a person is an employee. In God's was the Ministry of Justice, claimant or catering manager in a prison was injured by the negligence of a prisoner in the course of prison job. Prisoner dropped a bag of rice on claimant's back. Was the Ministry of Justice vicariously liable for the claimant's injury? Yes, it was. Here the test used was put forward in vicarious claimants versus Catholic Child Welfare Society. In this case, brothers of a Catholic order lived in a communal life, followed a hierarchical structure and renounced salaries payable for their teaching work. In return, the institution met all the brothers' needs. Was the disease liable for over 200 claims of sexual abuse by brothers? The Supreme Court held yes. The relationship had all the essential elements of the relationship between the employer and the employees. Lord Phillips stated, vicarious liability will be imposed where it is fair, just and reasonable to do so. Based on the following policy factors, defendant is more likely to be insured or able to compensate claimant than the employee. Second, the tort has been committed as a result of the employee activities on behalf of the defendant. Third, employee's activity is a part of defendant's business activity. Fourth, defendant's employment of employee to conduct an activity increase the risk of tort being committed by employees. Sixth, the employee will have to residual extent been under defendant's control. These criteria generally ensure that liability is imposed where it is fair, just and reasonable to do so. But a further fairness inquiry might be necessary where the test is applied to novel facts. The general approach which Lord Phillips described is intended to provide a basis for identifying the circumstances in which vicarious liability may, in principle, be imposed outside the relationships of employment. It recognizes that the modern workplaces, workers may in reality be part of the workforce of an organization without having a contract of employment with it. If an employer lends an employee to second employer and the employee commits a tort, which employer is liable? When employee, technically employed by original employer but works for another employer on day-to-day -day basis, both original employer and second employer can be vicariously liable. In Biosystems case, it was held that the important factors were the right of control, who was responsible for preventing the negligent act and whether the employee had been integrated in both the businesses. Both the parties had the right to control S, the employee. He had been in integrated into both the business. Therefore, there was dual vicarious liability and both the subcontractors were liable. Employees are generally not liable for negligence act of independent contractors. However, certain duties are non-delegable and so the employee will still be liable. In Woodland vs. Essex CC, Claimant was injured in a swimming lesson organized by her school with a dependent organization. Could Claimant sue her school? Supreme Court held yes. The school owed a non-delegable duty to the claimant. The employer will not be liable for tort committed by an employee when the employee is on a frolic of his own. In Hilton vs. Thomas Burton, workmen used to use their employee's van to go to cafe for afternoon tea. They travelled about seven miles but then returned back. On the return journey, due to the negligence of the driver, they crashed and one of them was killed. It was held that they were on frolic of their own and the defendant employee was not vicariously liable.